This is the Growlers Nation podcast, the official podcast of the Newfoundland Growlers. And now here's your host, Growlers play-by-play voice, Chris Ballard. And welcome to episode four of the Growlers Nation podcast. I'm Chris Ballard, Growlers play-by-play broadcaster. So happy to have you back for another episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the first three. First, we had James Melindy on to kick off the brand new season. Then it was Todd Skirving's turn. Then Giorgio Estefan was sitting here alongside me. And today we have uh, a brand new player and very special guest sitting alongside me today. A Hobie Baker finalist, the AHA Player of the Year last season in NCAA from your Newfoundland Growlers defenseman, Joe Duzak. Joe, thanks for jumping on uh, the mic here with me today. Thanks for having me. So I got to ask you, we were uh, we had media day here at Mile One uh, just a few days ago, and you were weirdly enthusiastic about jumping on and recording commercials and doing liners with me. Where does that come from? Uh, ever since I was a little kid, um, I would always announce the games with my mom and dad sitting no. next to me. Yeah, so uh, they always thought I had a future in it, so I might as well start now. No kidding. Well, hey, I'm happy to have you up here. Maybe someday we'll get you to run over some clips with us. But uh, here you are in your inaugural rookie season uh, in uh, pr- the professional ranks. couple of games already under your belt. Just kind of sum up how you feel out there after your first couple of ECHL games here. Uh, it's a good experience so far. I mean, uh, the guys are great here. Uh, good leadership group in uh, OB and Meller. So uh, they've really welcomed me in and all the other rookies. So it's been uh, pretty neat. Talk a bit about in very general. We'll get into it in our uh, Growlers Nation Q&A a little later on, but uh, talk a bit about the Newfie contingent here. You said Meller uh, and O'Brien, uh, two interesting cats from a pretty unique place here. Uh, what Have you per- picked up, I guess, on any of the quirks that come along with being from Newfoundland? They're just really, really nice. Uh, in New York, <laughs> in New York, that doesn't fly, so... The other day, we were at the grocery store, and me and Mac were getting some groceries, and we didn't have a ride home, and some random lady just said, hey, you want to hop in with us? And I was like, I was I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, is this is this going south right now? And uh, she actually took us home, dropped us off. She was she was great. You so, actually got in the yeah, car Yeah, we her. got in the car with her, and we were scared at first. We were like, is she going to drive us somewhere, or what's going <laughs> to happen here? And then she dropped us off, said, have a good day, and we walked in the house, and it was pretty neat. So uh, they're just really nice people here. Oh, that's that's crazy, but awesome <laughs> yeah. to hear. So you grew up in Franklin Square, New York, or at least that's what your Elite Prospects page says. 20 minutes from JFK. Uh, pretty much, can I call you out here from New York? city is that what you would say yourself nah yeah i'm from long island but uh, okay new york city yeah i'm 20 minutes from the city i mean the city's great um i'm not a huge city guy but uh yeah i'm from long island i'm not from the city Ooh, okay i had i was gonna ask because there's a pretty obviously a starch divide between uh, between the two but it's so does that make you a mets fan or a yankee fan i am a yankee fan okay i am a yankee fan um they're in a they're in a tough spot right now, so uh, we're trying to get the win tonight. What was it, what was game three last night? Yeah, as four we one record. loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's okay. We maybe we won't uh, dwell too much on that. They're a good uh, baseball team. They'll be just fine. Um, so tell me a bit more about that growing up there in uh, Nassau County. What was it like? Where did you play your first days of hockey? That kind of thing. Uh, actually, my uh, cousin taught me how to skate. Uh, my older cousin Ziggy, he went and played at Merrimack and. Uh, okay. He's a bit older. He's probably like uh, 45 now. So he taught me how to skate. And then um, I actually grew up playing for the Gulls. Uh, it was coached by Mike Bracco, Jeremy's dad. Get out. Yeah, so on that team, it was me and, and Jay and uh, Charlie McAvoy and Adam Fox. So we grew up together. And uh, no we still, deal. yeah, we all keep in touch. And it's pretty neat seeing those guys play. And uh, obviously, Jay being in the same uh, organization as me and being to hang out with him is uh, pretty cool. No kidding. And furthermore, on the New York side of things, I, d- I did, to be fair, had to do a bit of Googling to see exactly where Franklin Square, New York was. Yeah, you're not kind a of, lot of people know where well, it is. I didn't, and uh, I will admit that. I did notice you're kind of right on the, can I say, the beginning of Long Island yeah, there? Yeah, Close-ish to Manhattan. Yes. Right, okay. And I understand, I looked at, I've tried to find lists that are like, What's better on Long Island compared to the city? Uh, I heard bagels and pizza are better on Long Island than in uh, in Manhattan. Is that true? Yeah, the breakfast sandwiches there, the bacon, egg, and cheeses are no nothing beats it. Really? Not, not anything close. Nobody could touch it. It's not even close. New Jersey, nowhere, Connecticut, not even nobody could touch New York's bagels and uh, what's it, what is pizza. it about it? 
uh, just the way they make it. If you even, if people go to New York, if you go to New York City and you try a slice of pizza and a bagel, you'll never, you'll never eat another pizza or bagel from anywhere else. Ooh, that's big talk. I, I've never been, but I'm, uh, I definitely have to, to make my way there. Uh, so you played three seasons at Mercyhurst in Erie, Pennsylvania. I also had to Google where Mercyhurst was because <laughs> geography was not my strength. Uh, I mean, talk about your time playing in the NCAA. You absolutely torched that league. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool playing college. Um, it's the best, my best three years, uh, obviously four years if you stay all four uh, of your life, I think. Um, you're with your buddies 24-7. For sure. You're hanging out. You have class. Yeah, class is kind of uh, sometimes annoying, but it gives you <laughs> something to do during the day instead For of just sure. sitting around. So hanging out with them 24-7 and just all the, the good times we had. Uh, Mercier's was really key in my development. And, um, yeah, I couldn't thank them enough for, for what they've done for me. And you uh, got to play with uh, who was one of the OG growlers at the end of last season, uh, Matthew Whitaker. Any dirt on Wits? Uh, no, Wits is a good guy. Uh, yeah, he was a senior when I was last year when I was a junior, and right. he came here. And when he originally came here, I went to the Marlies, and he That's had nothing, right. nothing but good things to say here about this place. So coming here, I knew it was going to be a good place, and uh, it's worked out great. No, sure, sure has, and uh, you were here just over a month ago, I guess, for Toronto Maple Leafs training camp. Yeah. M my first question will be, you're getting off the plane in this place. For, have you had you ever even heard of Newfoundland before? No, never. I had no idea what it was. Uh, Wits obviously played here last year, right. but I didn't even know on the map where it was. And then uh, on the way here, I Googled it, and I was like, we're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> like, yep, <laughs> like, yep, you're right. What are we doing here? But... The people here are great, so it's it's yeah, it's a second to none city. Yeah, no, no kidding. What was your experience here uh, with Leafs camp? Obviously, you guys were in paradise uh, most of the week and at the rink, but what were your kind of first days, first experience here on the Rock? Uh, when I got off the plane, I was I was like, "What is this place?" We were <laughs> just came from 75, 80 degrees, sunny in Toronto. We yeah. came here; it was 40 and raining, and I was like, "Come on." I was in shock. I didn't even bring a jacket because I, no. I didn't even know where this place was. I didn't bring a jacket. So I was walking around with a sweatshirt all week. Like, I didn't know oh, what was going on. No. But, yeah, it was pretty cool uh, uh, place to come for training camp with the Leafs. No, absolutely. Were you overwhelmed by the fan support at all? Because you see a, a, a dot in the middle of the ocean and assume there's seven people there. That's a fair assumption. Yeah. But you get here and there's lines that are like, it's like almost a mile long to, to just get into the building to watch you guys practice. Like, did you get a sense of the passion of the community from uh, training camp that week? Uh, yeah, they're really passionate about the Leafs. Um, obviously, I'm a Yankee fan, so it's the same thing with the Yankees of and the course. Leafs baseball and hockey. Uh, you go you go to the middle of nowhere and in Tennessee and there's going to be a million Yankee fans there too yeah. it's just it's just the way it is that's like with all sports there's always that one team the Yankees the Leafs like there's always just one team that everybody follows and you could tell here that that they're really passionate about the Leafs absolutely so does that mean you grew up a Ranger fan or an Islander fan an Islander fan Okay. I grew up an Islander fan uh I grew up watching all the guys like Jason Blake and Alexei Yashin and uh Rick DiPietro was the goalie so I had a couple tough years growing up as a kid. Uh, I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. But those are good players. But, I'm but, not sure they had the best team. But one of the best memories I have actually came against the Leafs. Okay, the, I'm all ears. The Sean Bates penalty shot goal. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. known for his touch, but he uh, he showed it on that Posted play. Posted in, yeah. We, I, was, I was probably, I think that was 03, so I was like six years old. And I'll never forget it because... Obviously, I'm six. My mom and dad had me in bed at 8:30. They let me stay up to watch the game. So uh, <laughs> it was it was pretty cool. I've had a couple of those experiences where my mom and dad have let me come up and stay up, and my little sister would be all would be crying because she was like four, three years old. So she'd be crying because she couldn't stay up to watch the game. And uh, get out. It, it's happened a bunch of times. Same thing with the. Uh, Back, way back, I think the O2 Olympics, my dad let me stay up for the USA game. Oh, yeah. And my, and my sister had to go upstairs, and I had to hide behind the couch because they, they lied to her saying, oh, he's just – He's sleeping at my aunt's house. He's already in bed. No yeah. way. Yeah. So, so your parents helped you lie to your sister <laughs> yeah. to justify watching the O2 gold medal. Game yeah, I didn't, I didn't lie. I was just part of the plan. I was just hiding <laughs> behind the couch. But, yeah, my, my mom and dad would always uh, let me stay up and watch the, the big games. So 
that was pretty pretty neat by them. Have you talked to your parents about have they tuned into any games here? Because now they're the ones staying up late thanks to that hour and a half time difference. I'm not trying to get you to say, oh, they love listening to the games. That's yeah. not what this is for. But I, I have you have uh, they been tuning in? So the first game, uh, actually my cousin was getting married, so they couldn't watch the game. So they were, no uh, yeah, they were out at the wedding. And the second game, they didn't tune in either, I don't think, because I was hurt, and I didn't know if I was going to play. Right. So they went out. It was their uh, wedding anniversary oh the my next God. day. So yeah, both <laughs> of those things are definitely good reasons <laughs> yeah, to so not they, uh, in. They were like, oh, are you playing? We'll watch, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go out to dinner and then watch. And I was like, I don't know. So they just, I think they just went out to dinner. They didn't even... Think well, anyway, they're gonna have to stay up an hour and a half later. <laughs> yeah, they'll be drunk. on. They'll be on the next one for sure. Uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to that. Tons more questions to come here for our special guest today, Joe Duzak, and we're gonna turn right into our Growlers Nation Q and A. You're a popular fella here, Joe. Uh, lots of questions coming up here for you. Devin James Renuff asks, "What did you think about the Growlers winning the Kelly Cup last year?" And how are you enjoying Newfoundland so far? So you were with the Marlies until they were eliminated from the postseason. Obviously, uh, the link between the Marlies and the Growlers. How much uh, Growlers uh, came onto your radar, I guess, uh, down the stretch, uh, you know, say uh, May, June last year? Um, originally, when I got there, Hudson uh, Elenek was still there, and uh, I think a couple other guys were there. So when they got sent down, um, it's all over Twitter and all For that. Sure. So. You see what they're doing. Um, it's pretty special what they did last year, especially the first year in the league. So um, what they have here is good, and uh, what we're building now is pretty special too. So hopefully uh, we can keep it going. No, I hope so. As some, from someone like yourself, you weren't on this team last year. What was it like seeing that banner go up and really kind of – you get to live that moment whether you were here for it or not. What was that like for you? The fans were really into it for sure. Big time. Um, and then uh, just standing around the circle when they uh, announced us and then they went over to the banner uh, just to see those uh, – I think it was like 10 guys, 11 guys, whatever it was, uh, go over there, take a picture, and see how happy they were to see that banner uh, – you get happy for them for, for what they have accomplished. So it was pretty cool. No, absolutely. So thank you, Devin James Renouf, for that. Steph Conway and then about a half dozen more have asked, what was your first impression of Newfoundland? We got that one out of the way, but she also does ask, are there any sights uh, you've seen? Signal Hill, Cape Spear. Have the boys from last season taken you to the Duke for fish and chips yet? So I'm going to pull a few questions out of Steph's question here. Yeah. Have you? Uh, how many of the sights have you gotten around to see between Leafs camp and now? your first couple of weeks here in St. John's? During Leafs camp, we were only here for three days. Right. So uh, I actually did go up to Signal Hill. Nice. Um, me and Mac were actually just out to dinner, and then uh, we had, like, uh, volunteer chauffeurs around right. uh, the Leafs so all, all camp. So uh, this one guy, Tony, uh, Tony Como, actually, we called him the other day because <laughs> – because he we I, we love the guy. He, we think he's so funny. So uh, he said he didn't want to go home to his wife. So he took us <laughs> he took us to Signal Hill like 20 minutes all the way there. Yeah. He took us up there. He was showing us. All, it was it was probably like 7:30, 8 o'clock at night. So it was really beautiful to see all the lights and oh, the water. Awesome. So it was really nice. So that was the only place I've really seen uh, okay. sightseeing. I, I don't really know. Uh, other spots honestly i these guys will probably take me around but for sure i've been uh i've been to the rink i've been up there uh <laughs> i've been to all food places down by the water um right so i've been to local shops i've been obviously to the keg and all that stuff but yeah it's been pretty cool so far no kidding no this is uh, an absolutely cool city and uh, the more you get around the more you'll fall in love with it just warning you so thank you to steph conway uh actually well i'm gonna keep on her uh, question here for a moment um about the food, Newfoundland food is pretty unique in and of itself. Do you, do you, this is a stupid question, do you enjoy eating? Are you a food guy or do you just eat to live or live to eat? And what have you eaten here that's been like, hey, this is weird, but I like it? Um, uh, guys actually make fun of me for this, but I'm a very simple eater. Okay. Like uh, we go out to uh, say I get a burger, it's just bun, burger, bacon, nothing else on it. No, no, no cheese, ketchup. no lettuce. Just yeah, ketchup. Okay, obviously. I was gonna say you're no, not a monster. Yeah, no cheese, no lettuce, no tomato, no pickles, no nothing on the burger. So I'm very simple. So um, and I actually, <laughs> I actually don't eat fish. Okay. So oh, I oh, you're in the wrong spot. I only eat uh, seafood. I only eat baked clams and shrimp. I don't eat fish. So. Um, I'm very simple. I could eat the okay. same meals for, for the rest of my life, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you gave me eggs for breakfast, 
chicken for lunch and steak for dinner, I could eat it for the rest of my life and no problems. Okay. Have you? That being said, is there anything that you've ventured to try uh, specific Newfoundland cuisine? We've got Towtons for breakfast that are awesome, you know, all kinds of uh, different seafood dishes that may fit your palate. Is there anything you've tried or gone to any of the local bakeries or anything like that? Or <laughs> still too soon in your uh, still, tenure? Yeah, still too soon for me to... Uh, to me to venture out it's been 22 years since i've uh tried something new so <laughs> i, I we'll don't get really you there yeah hopefully uh one day i could enjoy the fish but it's just not not up my alley i smell it and i'm just i stay white right away okay good to know all right so uh we will uh, scratch off all of the fish and chip related questions we have here yeah thank you to steph conway for that ryan ag asks and this is a good question when being pursued by NHL teams as the uh, hot free agent that you were, what was it about the Leafs pitch that drew you in? Obviously, you can speak as comfortably as you can to that question, but I thought that was fair. What's it like being the, you know, the, the pretty girl in school, having everyone uh, coming after you, and what was it like uh, you know, to sign with the Leafs? Uh, yeah, I really just thought they're, uh, they're the way they do things here is uh, – pretty special and what how they uh handle themselves on and off the ice obviously are a uh, huge part of it but um yeah you just see the d they have and the d throughout the organization um obviously uh you have mac here with me uh right. if you look at every like even if you just look at me and mac we kind of play the same way yeah yeah some people get get us confused out there most of the time uh they'll be like oh mac did you give me that pass and no that was joe or joe did you give me that pass <laughs> no that was mac so uh, if you just look up and down through your organization with Tyson Berry and Morgan Riley and uh, Sandman and Lily, uh, yeah. they all play the same way. We all play the same way. So when you see that, you you see that there's a, there's a chance for growth and development, and uh, that's why I chose here. No, oh, awesome. That's a great answer. Uh, what was it like scoring your first pro goal last year? It was in the playoffs, right? Bit of a kind of a floater. I'm not taking anything away from you, but it was uh, – I think that was a rocket. <laughs> Definitely. Sorry, you're right. I'm, I, I'm misremembering, but uh, what was your memory there, uh, you know, last year, uh, last season, after a long year of uh, college hockey, getting your first pro tuck? Uh, yeah, um, it was pretty special to, to score my first goal, um, especially in the playoffs. And yeah. The, uh, playoff goals are obviously huge, and they're they're hard, harder to get, so... Um, when I scored that first goal, it was just a relief that, okay, now I can just settle in and play my game and do what I have to do. And uh, just being able to see, especially Jay, just be so happy for me on the bench. And uh, that was pretty cool after the game, just looking at each other and being like, wow. like That just happened. Yeah, like we're we're one step away, you know. And uh, yeah. especially when you grow up dreaming about it when you're three, three years old on the ice together, skating around and everybody's dreams to play in the NHL, obviously. And for us to kind of be doing it together is is pretty special. So you're good buddies with Jeremy Bracco. Though. Yeah. This is stuff I can't pull off your Elite Prospects page here. Yeah. I did not know that. Uh, well, actually, so before I was, we were both born, his dad played with my older cousin who taught me how to skate. So the, we've like we've been family friends since we, before we were born. No my mom way. and dad have known him since... Mike since probably he was 16 years old and they played together and Get so out. yeah it's pretty it's pretty special um and then we played obviously from when we were this tall like three years old until ba uh, basically yeah, until yeah. we went to the to the program so unbelievable when he went to the program we had uh, about four or five years where we didn't play together because right. he went to program went to the OHL and then uh when uh, the Leafs reached out to me, the first thing I, I thought to do was to call Jay and ask him what he thought. And obviously being there with him, it's... Uh, yeah. And then right away you get the text from, from Mike and his mom, Vicky. So it's just like it's... And, and my mom texts Jay like, when he does good things. And it's just uh, we see each other all summer. And we go I go to his uh, dad's bar and have his... Uh, he has unbelievable flame and young there. Unbelievable. You Ooh. catch me at Brocco's bar. It's unbelievable. It's uh, steak, corn, mashed potatoes, french oh fries, whatever you want there. And he obviously hooks it up, and it's unbelievable. Like, the, the food there is great, and he knows as soon as I walk in, it's filet mignon, corn on the cob, Stop. automatically. Yeah, he doesn't even ask what I want. He knows exact <laughs> He knows exactly, because I'm so simple. He knows exactly what I'm coming there for, and he just... He, uh, it's it's great, yeah. So growing up with him and obviously being on the ice when you're three years old, everybody dreams of scoring game seven goal in of the course. NHL. And when you when you're that young, nobody ex 
you you can't look at a kid and be like, oh, this kid's gonna gonna sign an NHL deal or play right. in the NHL, and and it's pretty special that uh, we're we're trying to chase our dreams right now. That's crazy. I had no idea. That's absolutely awesome. So yeah. thank you back to Ryan Ag for leading us down that path there. David Follett asks, what are your thoughts on Coach John Snowden's guidance with uh, this newly cemented team, and how is he maybe different from other coaches you may have worked with? So uh, first impressions, because Snowy was around during uh, Leafs camp as well. What were your first impressions of how this group is maybe shaping up under his guidance? The way I am, I'm just uh, like a... I like to make jokes about everything and be a funny <laughs> guy and just always have be laughing. So, uh, especially even with Kiefer last year and here, as soon as I show up, I just like to make everyone laugh. And so he was, at first, I didn't know how to read him. Is he a serious guy? Will he laugh at right. me? And, and the first day I started cracking jokes and he was laughing. So it was good to, to make sure that he was on board with my antics because uh, I... <laughs> I, I like to get I, I go far and away out of the realm of what people say and do so I just kind of I had to like moderate what I say to him first and then For sure you got to feel him out yeah and then once I knew that he'd laugh with me it was uh it was pretty easy from there no kidding so can I extrapolate from there and say are you like a prank prankster kind of guy no no I don't pull any pranks no pranks I don't pull any pranks in the locker room nothing because I don't want any pranks done to me that's fair. I don't pull any that's of that fair. I just like to make uh, a lot of jokes and kind of kind of stir the pot so if uh, someone else is going at each other I'll stir the pot and be like oh no you didn't oh, oh. And I'll, I'll get them okay. going a bit okay but I hear you I, I kinda, I'm kind of the guy in the background that just stirs it and then waits for for everyone else to start uh, messing around and guys will laugh at me because they know what I'm trying to do so uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty funny. <laughs> that is funny, and uh, thank you very much to David Follett for that question. So many people have asked specific Newfoundland questions. Morgan Stacy did as well. Aiden Foley. Peter Michael Norris asks, did you get screeched in yet? That is the rite of passage for to become an honorary Newfoundlander. Have you gone through that song and dance just yet? No, I haven't yet. Uh, I haven't been screeched in yet. I'm okay. waiting for it. My buddies actually were just here from uh, Reading, and they got screeched in before I have. So Stop. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll have to get it done sooner rather than later. But, um, yeah, I'm just waiting for the right time maybe. That's, that's probably what I'm waiting for, the right time. There you go. What do you think it involves? I'm sure you've been told. Yeah. In your mind, what have you been told screeching in is? So basically, it's like you become a uh, honorary uh, Newfoundland person, and yep. they you gotta you start by <laughs> by kissing a fist, taking a shot of rum, and then you gotta sing a song or a poem or something like that, and then okay. uh, That's and then you get fair. a yeah, you get a certificate, and then you're That's right. You're and one you're of them, an official, yeah. You're yeah. an honorary Newfoundlander. All right, but I just so, didn't know. Yeah, I, did, I don't know all the details or what order it goes in. I just know you got to kiss a fist, take a shot, and then and then uh, sing a song or a poem or whatever they have. You just repeat after what the guy says. But I heard it's kind of hard because they have these accents, and I don't. Uh-huh. I have a Long Island accent, so it's like uh, I don't. I don't really know. I could understand <laughs> them, but it's like, well, I, I don't know if I could say that. <laughs> No, I, uh, I guess I get where you're coming from there. So I will ask you this about uh, getting screeched in. In your in your simple diet, your simple tastes, uh, much bologna in there? When <laughs> I'm I was sure there's up, not. When I was growing up, I ate bologna almost every day for lunch. Stop. Every I did not day. expect you to say that. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I ate it every day for lunch. My grandma used to make it. Like, she used to make me a sandwich and then uh, peanut butter crackers. So that's what I had for when I was five until when I was... When she stopped watching me, so I, I like, I I used to eat bologna all the time. Okay, all the time. so you'll be just fine when you go to get screeched yeah. in because you do have to eat a piece of yeah, fried bologna. That's yeah, that's fine. Like it, that's that's perfectly fine with me. Okay, all right. So much thanks. The kiss in the fish is going to be the hard part. You just got to close your eyes. I, I just hate fish. Hate the smell of fish. Oh so yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be tough. Just oh, I'll just have to hold my nose and kiss it and. And, and then move on and not think about maybe it. Maybe go straight to the bathroom and wash it right off my lips. You're that ad- adverse or whatever to, to fish. Yeah, eh? I just don't like it. Okay. I, over, uh, I'm obviously Catholic, so over uh, Christmas, you're not allowed to eat meat. That's right. So my mom just makes me some shrimp and baked clams, and I have some pasta because I, I, they'll, they'll eat fish. My family loves fish, so they'll eat fish all the time. And when they're cooking it, I'm like, guys, turn that down. Get it off the stove because I, I can't stand the smell. Okay, well, uh, it'll be because there's different versions of getting screeched in. There's one that's kind of 
the lesser one where it's a stuffed fish. It like a like a stuffed toy. Yeah. That's nothing to it. But you no, want you gotta I, I get the real, real thing, deal. Yeah. Yeah. If we're I'm glad you're on board at least. I'm on the I'm on the real yeah. Time. I'll suck it up for, for ten seconds and for the sake of becoming an honorary Newfoundlander, yeah. you've gotta go real deal. I'll do the real deal. So uh, thank you very much to Peter Michael Norris for that question. Moving on to the next one from Rod Z, a good friend of the show. Uh, do you attribute your style to any player or players past and present? So what this reads to me is, uh, is there anyone in particular you uh, model your game after or favorite players growing up, that kind of thing? My favorite player growing up was Datsuk, so no, huh. I don't. <laughs> He's a little tough to emulate. Yeah, and I'm a D-man, so it's kind of hard to do. But a lot of people have told me that, uh, uh, especially growing up when I was 14, 15 years old, I play like a Brian Rafalski type game. And now with the, with the newer defensemen, you see Tory Krug and Shane Gothisbear. So guys like that, uh, smaller stature guys that, that like to move the puck and join the rush. So kind of try to emulate what they do and uh, how they play the game. Absolutely, that's a great question, and thank you to Rod Z for asking it. Shakira Young asks, any pregame rituals, or what's your mindset during a game? Are you a superstitious fella? I am. I am superstitious. Ooh. I like to do everything. I wouldn't say superstitious. It's more of a routine. Um, everything I do, I do it the same way every game, and so I'll get here. Well, before I get here, I'll, I'll be at home, and I'll listen to the same songs and listen to to the same uh, type of playlist and then I'll come here and I don't wear any headphones or any of that. Once I get here, whatever they got on the radio is fine, but just play soccer before every game, make sure it's three games that I play soccer of, then stretch, then play another sewer game, then oh. go back in to the, to the locker room, get dressed. I always go out on the ice, the same uh, number of people before me and right. after me. So like if I'm the fourth person on the ice i got to be the fourth person on the ice for the first period second period third period so what yeah i do all that stuff and then getting dressed it's the same thing uh obviously you have your under armor stuff but then i go uh right shin pad right sock left shin pad left sock pants right skate left skate right elbow pad left elbow pad shoulder pads jersey and then helmet right glove left glove and then go on the ice if you were to do one of the one of those things out of order with how badly would that ruin your day if you accidentally shove the left glove on first you're like oh, oh no. yeah it's just i know what i'm doing i make sure that i keep it so you're locked in when you're getting dressed yeah then. and then same thing on the ice if you ever watch me in warm-ups i do the exact same warm-up i take the exact same uh routes everywhere every time i play yeah Get so out. i'll come on the ice i'll make sure i only shoot two pucks and then i'll skate around in the entirety of warm-up you touch and shoot two pucks well no i'll shoot two pucks and then we'll come up to the top and then i'll shoot one puck there then i'll shoot one more when we do the uh horseshoe and then one more shot after that and get out yeah i take maybe like nine shots all uh all warm up all warm up guys get are out. ripping them off the glass taking about 30 40 right. shots yeah nine you're shots. saving your good ones for the game yeah i because when i was a little kid when i was 14 or 15 years old i didn't want to break my stick and warm-ups so i wouldn't take any shots because Obviously, I, I'm not from, like, a, a rich, rich family, so sure. um, my dad would only buy me the top-of-the-line sticks for the games. So I'd only have two top-of-the-line sticks, and I'd only use them during games. And then during practice, I'd use almost – I've used wood sticks in practice before when I was, like, yeah. 16 years old. I had a, a coho, and I had a, a Sherwood, and he would make me use those in practice. And then I obviously – I finally asked him one Christmas. I was like – Hey, listen. Can I get can I get at least uh, actual stick for practice? So he went online and went in America. I don't know if they have in the Canada. We have this thing called Hockey Monkey. Okay. And it's like uh, you get deals on the website, and he got me like a six pack of X seventies, and these things were basically like wood. They were just painted, <laughs> and and it was it was six pack of X seventies, maybe for a hundred and fifty bucks. Stop. So it was like yeah, it was like thirty bucks a stick, twenty five bucks a stick, and. He was like, yep, here you go. Here's here's your new practice sticks. And then I would have uh, the Vapors, the actual 1X. I forget what it was back then. Uh, Vapor LTE or 1X, whatever the top yeah, of the yeah. line Vapor was in the games. So in the games, I would I'd be so scared to break my stick. So scared. Because you didn't want to use the lumber that your old yeah, man got exactly. on yeah. Monkey. And every Christmas, he would give me uh, a new stick. So I'd try, to, I'd try to hold it out for the entire... Get yeah. out. 
That's crazy. The things you remember about, that's funny. In, yeah. my, in my day, we was only ever wooden sticks. And I never broke a stick when I played the game. I was a goalie, so you didn't break them often. Yeah. I'll thank my Bauer Reactor, Nikolai Hobby Bullen model for that, but uh, never broke one. So, uh, And apparently neither did you, but uh, thank <laughs> yeah. you very much uh, for that question there. Uh, that one from uh, Shakira Young. Moving on to Sam Patterson. This one's a bit of a tough one. Is playing in the ECHL becoming more desirable for players in college and the American leagues like the USHL, particularly as the Leafs are now treating the Growlers as more of a development slash feeder system? That is a heavy question. Fact of the matter is, the ECHL maybe has had a bad rap over the course of the last few years, but I can tell through your experience here already, uh, the ECHL is is no longer uh, a place where guys dread to go. I, I'm, I don't know what your reaction was in getting quote-unquote sent down, but do you see the ECHL as being a, a good develop, a part of the development tool here for the Leafs? Uh, you haven't been sulking around having been here. I know that's kind of a, this is a dicey question to definitely ask and answer, uh, but do you see the, the benefit of it, I guess, of the Leafs using the ECHL in, in quite this way? Obviously, I don't sulk at all. That's just not the way I am, first of all. So it's just, uh, I'm just an upbeat guy all the time, Good. no matter where I am. So, yeah, it's part of the process, I would say. Uh, I know a couple of buddies, uh, especially from Long Island, like Brandon Fortunato, who's with Nashville. Yeah. He just got sent down to the Everblades, and he was asking me about the league. And I guess a, a lot of teams nowadays are using this as a, an entry point because the way I look at it is that... Uh, they they want you to play top minutes all the time right. as a prospect, right? So and that's a good thing. Yeah, if especially with the with the Leafs or even with the Predators now, I see their lineup because he was like, Joe, what's going on? What? And he was asking me because the way it is, uh, especially guys like like me, um, a skilled guy, you need power play time. You need to be out right. there when when the game a six on five situation, yada yada yada. So. And on the Marlies right now, you have uh, Lily and you have obviously uh, NHL defensemen there right. because they had to send down guys because not all the NHL defensemen can make it. So you have Smoltz and, and Harper. So you're not going to get those top four minutes there. So you probably get a 5-6 spot. Right. If, yeah. So you don't you, you want to play more minutes and you want to be uh, an impact on your teams and, and then obviously – progress to the next stage and then yeah. hopefully one day you become a top four hld and then eventually an nhl right. top nhl top 60 i mean but um yeah they people are using this as a feeder now and especially if you just look at at every team especially in the north division there's at least three guys on every team that are on at nhl least. contract yeah, yeah. So you you look at, at yeah you look at every team in the North Division. There's three guys that are on NHL deals that are in the coast just because whether it be it's a numbers game yeah, yeah and an opportunity so, game yeah exactly. So it's, especially when you're young, it's not that that difficult because you know you have a lot of time and you could make the most of it here. Right. And obviously, uh, especially for me having a guy like uh, Adam Party on the ice cause it, because he'll teach me how to play defense and that's what I need the most just to yeah. learn how to play in my own end more and and learn how to shut plays down quicker so having guys like that uh, around every day is uh, beneficial to us. No absolutely and thank you for answering that question it's a tough one for even me to ask but I think it's beneficial to because maybe back in the day a lot of people would have assumed that uh, you know the ECHL is uh, where you know teams go to bury their contracts they don't want anymore it is no longer the case uh, even yeah. uh, even in my experience here so thank you for sam uh, to sam patterson uh for asking uh, that challenging question uh and that is all of our q a uh, here for today uh, and i think that's gonna wrap up our segment here with growlers rookie defenseman joe duzak joe uh thanks for uh, jumping on here with me today and uh, all the best uh, i can't wait to stare at you uh, in warm-up next time you're out there yeah whenever you need me back up here let me know I'll, I'll come I'll come announce the game for the for the Growlers fans. I'm okay with that. All I'm hearing is day off. Hopefully <laughs> you're back out onto the ice, but if not, uh, I think I might have to put my feet up for a while. Maybe Joe. just for a period. I'll come up here and then be your sidekick. All right, well, then that means you're kicking Raj out. I don't know about that, <laughs> but in any case, uh, happy to have you on here. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, definitely catch up with you again soon.
Many thanks to Joe Duzak for joining us on today's podcast. Uh, certainly uh, an exciting player for your Newfoundland Growlers this season. We'll move right into this week's Growlerville segment where we feature uh, the great hockey communities around the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. No special guest for the Growlerville segment today, so that means I get a chance uh, to talk about one of my favorite hockey communities in this great province, a community I got to get involved in when I first started uh, my journalism career. I'm talking about... Uh, the great town of Clarenville, Newfoundland and Labrador. With a population of pretty much the exact same as the capacity at Mile 1 Center, 6,291 uh, Clarenville and the surrounding communities of Shoal Harbor, Random Island, you're close to everything down on the Bonavista Peninsula, uh, is really a great sporting community and a great hockey community. They hosted the 1994 Newfoundland and Labrador Winter Games in November of 2010, hosted the Four Nations Cup, the uh, National uh, Professional Women's uh, Tournament there, uh, and is a countless senior hockey games over the years. It's a great senior hockey city. That's what really drew me there. My connection to this city, or the town rather, uh, of Clarenville is uh, as a newspaper reporter for the uh, paper out there, the weekly paper, the packet. Uh, back uh, when I was first cutting my teeth in journalism, I spent uh, a full year out there covering everything they had in the world of sports. And the thing that really kept uh, that town buzzing uh, was hockey. Uh, in particular, their senior hockey team, the Clarenville Caribous, who rose to national fame, winning the senior championship for the whole country of Canada, the Allen Cup, only the second Allen Cup ever won by a Newfoundland squad, and they did that in 2011 at the tournament in Kenora, Ontario, and they actually got the honor to host that prestigious tournament and did a wonderful job in doing so back in 2015. Unfortunately, they couldn't get the job done. Uh, they did lose in the semifinals that year, but certainly a tremendous honor for uh, not just the town, uh, but for the entire province of Newfoundland and Labrador as well. The Growlers uh, and our broadcast team even indirectly have a connection to Clarenville. Uh, beyond myself, Randy Piercy, our very own host on Rogers Television, actually coached that team uh, from 2006 to 2010. And I Got a few herder championships in there as well. The Caribous have four herders uh, during their time and have really become one of the powerhouses uh, of senior hockey. And uh, they play out of a wonderful facility as well at the Clarenville Event Center. I believe it's the East Link Event Center now. A great facility for the, given the size of the town and surrounding area, uh, only holds about just under 2,300 people, but I can tell you that barn is as busy and as rocking as any barn in the ECHL when they pack that in for senior hockey, so that's an awesome place. And as well, their minor hockey system is one of the best uh, in the province as well, the Caribou's minor hockey system. Uh, so many kids uh, in that area are uh, absolutely in love with the game of hockey, and as well, that's always seemingly been a stop for if and when of the Growlers and even the previous uh, Ice Caps uh, used to do their their preseason tour of the island. I remember, I think it was the first Ice Caps game I had ever seen, or one of them anyway, before I started working in hockey. It was uh, a preseason game in Clarenville. Uh, while I was working for that newspaper. So that was uh, that's a neat uh, connection there for me uh, as well. And in addition to that Clarenville Event Center, a beautiful facility um, that services that whole area, not just for hockey, but for entertainment. There's a wonderful theater. I caught the review in there a few years ago. It was deadly. Uh, if you've ever played hockey in Clarenville growing up, that's not where you would have played. You would have played at the old Tin Can Arena there off of Manitoba Drive there. Uh, again, that's one of those classic buildings I remember playing my minor hockey as a kid. You remember going to Clarenville and staying at, a, at one of the bed and breakfasts around the corner or something like that and uh, and going to town in that. Those tin can barns, that and the old Smallwood Arena, which we featured uh, when we last spoke with Trevor Murphy about the great city of Mount Pearl. Very similar, cold, but just that's where community character is born and it certainly was in Clarenville there. So that's going to do it for our short Growlerville segment here for the week and for our podcast this week. Many thanks to Joe Duzak uh, for jumping on the podcast with me here today. And again, folks, uh, I'll be keeping you all posted on the Growlers Nation social media pages on Facebook and on my own Twitter page as well to let you know who I'll be talking to next. And I want your questions, so make sure to get them in. Make sure you get your tickets if you haven't already done so uh, for the Growlers upcoming contest. 
mile1center.com or call the Mile One Center box office at 576-7657. You can catch every Growlers game with me uh, for free online, every single game, no exceptions, at mixler.com slash nlgrowlers. So again, on behalf of all of us, thanks for tuning in to this week's Growlers Nation podcast, and we will see you next week. You've been listening to the Growlers Nation podcast with Chris Ballard. Follow the Growlers all season long on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at NL Growlers. Listen live to all 72 Growlers games on Mixler, M-I-X-L-R dot com slash NL Growlers.